guys everybody today we have on the podcast her on john so here that, we go so you know this interview can go about 10 seconds because i just need to know what is that what is that female voice at the beginning of maple syrup tears which one the intro the intro like the like the, like the like the woman saying goodbye. Goodbye, John. Either the goodbye or hello, John. Goodbye, John. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. John. okay. So that kind of whole thing, like that's like, so in like 2018, or I don't know like how long you've been like listening to my shit or whatever, but like in 2018, I made that EP like Fan of Fantasy, like in October, like that. That's the one that has like Yoko on it and shit, and. uh yeah, I was just kind of like, mm, like, I, like I was listening to a lot of hip hop at the time, like a lot of like classic two thousands hip hop, like a lot of like a lot of Lil Wayne and stuff like that. And um, I really love when artists have uh, beat tags, you know, like when you hear somebody and it's like, you know, whatever. It's like the Lil Wayne, like the lighter flick, or like, you know, any any Man, sort of. And where'd you find? Yeah, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. That should damn. So yeah, this is a certified hood class, you know, like all that shit. So like, I think that's really dope when people do that. So I was kind of like, oh, like kind of being in this like kind of indie, indie pop, like alt alternative world. Like, I feel like no one really has like beat tags, you know? So I was kind of like, fuck, like that could be cool to kind of just throw something fun in there. And I, I don't know, I was just kind of thinking like that, that little vocal clip, like of not of the goodbye, John, that's just like this like lady that I know, but then this, uh, like the hello john is like the voice of siri you oh. know i don't know i was kind of just like okay like it's siri is like this we, we we all we all siri is always with us you know she's always in our pockets so why not uh that's cool that's cool this i was i was i mean that's the first thing that i noticed when i i mean uh i don't know who put you on the the bedroom pop playlist but that's when i first heard the the maple syrup and uh that tag instantly just draws you in like pow. yeah yeah and it's, i'm like oh it's like, and it's good it's good that you said that because it does give you something different you know yeah. there's a lot of things on there but that tag is like wait it's not but you know you go to the rap caviar it's like every single one is metro you know yeah 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 they all have the little uh the little tags in there so i thought that that'd be that would be kind of an interesting little thing that's cool that you picked up on that yeah, dude. Uh, yeah. So that I've also noticed is that it seems that you are extremely influenced by Tyler, the creator. Yeah. Oh, wait. Also, quick questions. Yeah. Is, it, is this like a video thing or audio only? This is going to be a video unless you don't want it. Oh, okay. no, no, no. That's cool to be. That's cool for it to be video. I'll, I'll like, I'll kind of lean in then because I was like sitting back like hella far. I'll, you can I'll relax. You can, you can chill out. You can just put this on like on YouTube or whatever. That'll be cool. Yeah, it's gonna go on YouTube and then it will go on uh, Spotify and everything later. Yeah. Nice. One anyway, topic. anyway, you, you were you were saying I probably should have asked that beforehand, but whatever. No, we just jumped into it, man. At first, I had to start berating you, you know. So it was kind of my bad. But um, no, I just want to talk about like Tyler the Creator. I, I just see like so much influence um, from his style, from um, <laughs> your early tapes, um, just to some of the the way you put your melodies. Some of your lyrics as well seem very like uh odd future kind of you know man you can damn you can drink <laughs> dude we gotta get that water going bro we gotta stay hydrated so tell me so tell me about like your fascination with tyler if i may presumptuously assume that yeah so um yeah that's just like a whole story in an in and of itself i never like you know i to be honest with you i don't really listen to tyler anymore 
um but kind of like I, I bought the well that's that's bullshit i bought the cherry bomb like the look like the vinyl on record store day like the i'm like a huge vinyl head you can see my little mm. turntable and all my records in the back there but um yeah i'm a huge vinyl head and, you know, of course I had to snag that, you know, when it got pressed for the first time, but just kind of like in, I, I, in terms of streaming services, I'm never like streaming Tyler, you know, like not really anymore. Just like, it is, you know, it's just like, how, how old are you? 28. Tw are you 28? Yes. Oh, damn. Um, <laughs> I you know. know, just like, well, then you understand, like you kind of, as you age, like your musical tastes are going to morph, you know, you're going to be interested in new shit so like that's just kind of like it's a very natural progression kind of just not get it kind of getting out of tyler as i get older you know like i just turned 21 a couple days ago right but kind of my whole uh my whole um fascination like with odd future and stuff um you know like the story could be an hour long i'll condense it into you know 30 seconds basically it was just like i started playing instruments um you know like when i was really young boy when i was probably when i was like seven or eight and then i got enrolled in this jazz school in downtown chicago where i was taking guitar lessons and like you know it's this whole kind of coincidental story you know whatever a bunch of shit happens this that and the other but then like basically as a product of a string of multiple coincidences I found myself accidentally listening to the Goblin album by Tyler in 2011, like right when it came out. Um, and that was the first hip hop I'd ever listened to. That was the first, that was the only music that I'd ever listened to that was not classic rock or like 90s grunge at the time. Cause I was like, I was about 11. So that was the first hip hop that I'd ever listened to. Um, and I became extremely, uh, extremely obsessed with Tyler after that album came out and the whole odd future phenomenon you know back in 2011 and 2012 and all those uh all that stuff like my dad like he would he would go with me to like the pop-up shops in downtown chicago or like he'd take me to the shows and like stand in the mosh pit with me and shit was so fucked but um so then in 2013 the wolf album came out um, and that just like changed everything for me, you know, like everybody kind of has their own, like everybody has their couple albums where you're like, okay, like there's a, there's a before me, you know, before I listened to this album and there's an after me, you know, like that kind of thing. So Wolf was definitely, I've got probably three or four of those albums and Wolf is definitely one of the big ones. And, uh, yeah, that just kind of changed the way that I listened to music in general, and I didn't produce um, back then. I got into production when I was like, when I was right when I turned 13 about, and like that was when that Tyler album came out. So basically like I went on Google and, you know, searched up like, you know, what, what, how does, how the fuck is Tyler the creator, like making these backing instrumentals or beats or what, you know, whatever. I didn't even know like what production was at the time. Like my understanding of music, you know, when I was like 13 is that everybody is going into the studio and like playing real instruments and like right. that's it. You know, like I had no other understanding of it beyond that. So I heard that and that just kind of fucking shifted the paradigm for me. You know, it really, really changed things. So yeah, I went on Google and I looked up like, you know, how is Tyler the creator making the, you know, the back, backing instrumentals on the Wolf album. Um, and then the, the top uh, result was Propeller Had Reason, which is like still the same software that I've used like from 2013, like to now. You right, know? So you're still a, you're a Reason guy. So that all the stuff yeah, that... Yeah. Wow, that's that's pretty incredible. You're one of the very few. There's not many of us, dude. There's not. We we're definitely like a dying species. Like the reason users, like being a reason user is like being a fucking like rare like dodo bird. Like we're still around, but like we're like in a we're 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 an endangered number. species. Yeah, we're yeah we're. I think they even continued VST three, didn't they? They're like, nah, we're, we're they're pretty much done with that. No, they, so what happened was, is that they, it was really goofy because they didn't enable VST3 support until like two years ago. Right. Like literally like all the other DAWs, like Ableton, they've got it. Logic, they've got it. Even like fucking GarageBand, you can open up your plugins in GarageBand. But like Reason was on this like medieval times ass shit, you know? And it was like, oh, we're not going to do VST3, whatever, whatever. And then they finally like, they finally batch backtracked and brought it in. But yeah, that was a whole, that was, I was, I was debating switching wow. in 2017, 
in 2017, I was like, dude, fuck, let, let's just, let's just get on the Ableton wagon. Like, you know, let, let's just, let's just do it. Like whatever. Um, but you know, then they, then they announced that switch up. So I had to, I just, I have to stick with my roots. You know, I can't just abandon reason like that. Oh, you can't, you can't. Yeah. I, I, I totally had it flipped up. I thought that they had uh, discontinued, but it was actually that they hadn't adopted it. So right. I, yeah. It's the other way around. But like still like in like, you know, having it be like 2018 and having like a mainstream DAW, like not using VST3, like to me, that was just very odd. Um, reason is that the workflow of reason is definitely for a very specific type of person. I think that like the reason people are like the people that definitely like grew up like playing instruments, you know, like that yeah. kind of stuff. And like the people that grew up like using like hard like pieces of like hardware gear you know rather than like somebody who loves like fl studio where it's like yeah you can make just as good of music if not better but like those people are kind of more into like plugins and you know kind of stuff like that um i think there's a huge diy nature to reason where like you, have to, you really have to delve in and you have to click about 100 buttons before you get anything kind of decent and that's exactly. kind of the charm yeah. of it but but when you do i feel like maybe that is all another reason why your album st stood out to me is because i feel like some of those organic sounds even though they are digital um can really be crafted handcrafted well in reason totally totally yeah and with reason like like I could be wrong in this assumption, but I feel like doing everything in reason is like, like I'm like working harder than I should be, you know, like, like sometimes I kind of feel like, bro, if I like learned how to use Ableton really well and I like mixed this whole project in Ableton, like maybe I could mix it in like half the time and get the same result, you know, but like, fuck it. At this point, I'm in too deep. Yeah. I'm in too deep. Your addiction's, your addiction's uh, heavy, but um, yeah. So your your first album did that did you mix produce master everything when you put it out there yeah mm -hmm. oh wow that's pretty cool. yep and when did it when did you feel like things started taking off um i mean uh, like of course all that all that terminology is like super subjective you know it's just sort of like maybe e even like Billie Eilish could think that like she hasn't taken off yet I, don't, I mean like that's that's probably a bad example but like kind of just you know so I guess sort of like kind of just switching up the question a little bit kind of like when I when I was kind of being like reaffirmed I guess and kind of like gaining that confidence of like okay like this is working like people like this you know like this is like this is something that I can do you know and like this can be successful I would say honestly that point didn't even come until like Apocalypse Wow quite frankly wow. yeah so like pretty re it's still kind of like that whole sentiment is still kind of like um setting in you know it's it's still kind of like a, like all the um i won't i won't bore you with the details but just all like kind of the like the the back kind of the back end of it kind of like all the legal stuff that goes on like all the contracts and the deals and like my like team members and kind of you know everybody that's like kind of working with me here that I'm like, you know, I'll tell my manager kind of like, okay, you got to do like this, that, and the other, or like, you know, we'll like, we got like the lawyer and stuff and like kind of all that type of shit. So, I mean, really it's, it's, it's been like a very, it's been a very new and a very recent process, even, even as recent as like, you know, June, July, 2020 kind of being like, okay, like we put out this project, like, yeah, it, it, it made some waves, but like, how can we go further? You know, how can we like, write the next page of the book and kind of expand the narrative so right. yeah it's is really that, been a, is that around when you got signed and you're and you're signed to uh interscope aren't you no 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 not 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 signed anywhere no not signed um, anywhere. just management no 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 yeah my manager she like i won't disclose too much information um you know but yeah she she works in the music industry um, but yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not signed anywhere. Okay. Got you. Got you. And so, mm -hmm. but what, what is that like though, bringing it back? Just like, so let's say you're gaining some sort of traction, some sort of confidence in yourself with this album, and then people are approaching you to reaffirm that confidence. How do you, how do you navigate that as a young artist? You know, how do you navigate that when maybe other people or multiple people are coming at you? Um, uh, I think, um, you know, kind of, kind of what I was just talking about, like a lot of that, a lot of that, like a lot of that kind of background strength will like, you know, come from, you know, like your manager or your lawyer or your, your agency or whatever, you know, like 
hopefully, right? If any, if any artist out here is watching this and you're not getting that reaffirmation and that confidence and that support from those people, then maybe look for some new people, you know? But um, yeah, that's just kind of that whole thing. Like, you know, of course, like being approached and when kind of money comes into the picture, like legalities or just kind of more, more like intense um, kind of uh, responsibilities and constraints, you know, that kind of weren't once there when I was just like, you know, my first EP in 2018 or my second EP in like late 2018, like those were the days where I was just making something, I would finish it and then I just release it whenever I want, you know, that, and that's it. And it's like, yeah, I'm still doing that, but it's like, you know, there's a lot more strategy involved. There's a lot more like, you know, there's a lot more intricacies involved, like on the day to day. Mm -hmm. so, so going back to responsibility, one of the craziest things that like totally blew my mind open when I was on Instagram following one of your stories, uh, yeah. you did a little impromptu uh, interview with your fans and stuff like that. And you, okay. you mentioned that you were in college. Yep. That blew my head absolutely yeah. apart. I was like, oh my, you know, you just have all these assumptions. So you are, you're finishing your, your uh, degree in business music, music business. Yeah, correct. Music business. Yeah. And navigating all this stuff. So wh yeah. why, why, why did you? <laughs> Dude, it's fucked. <laughs> it's so fucked. Oh my God. You just so hate yourself. You just trying to cause yourself pain. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't really know, dude, who the fuck knows? I mean, like at, at this point, like it's nice at least at this point, because like, I don't know, like I think about it kind of how it was like, I'm, I'm a junior now. So I'm in first semester junior year. So I got like kind of one around like one more year to go. I think I'm going to be graduating early, which will be nice, but like a little, you know, we're, we're, we're nearing the end. Like, it's not like I just started this bitch, you know? So like, but kind of thinking about back to like freshman year, you know, like first or second semester when I was like, you know, it was, I was, it was still kind of like a casual thing. It wasn't like, okay, it wasn't casual, but it was like, you know, there wasn't everything involved that is now involved today. Um, and like back then it wasn't really that, it honestly was not that big of a challenge, you know, like it was like, okay, you know, like I can totally balance this, like do my schoolwork in the day, make music when I'm done. It's all good, you know, but like now, dude, like I'm feeling the heat. I'm feeling the fucking heat. Holy shit. What? Like just kind of like kind of being like kind of uh, breaking into that like upperclassman qualification, you know, it's now now it lies like a junior, you know, now you're kind of getting into the tougher classes and kind of like the more intensified, you know, whatever curriculums or, you know, whatever it may be. So like, you know, it's 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 a thing. It's fine. Like I'm at the end of the day, I'm making it work, you know, and, and I'm trying my best to do, you know, whatever I can just to kind of keep, keep all the, the simultaneous kind of balls individually rolling, you know? So yeah, that's just kind of a thing. But I mean, I, what I'd like to tell myself just to kind of like cling on just to, to a portion of sanity is that just like, it'll be over soon, you know, like, and once it is over, then I'll have so much more time to do, you know, plan A right so right do, do your teachers and your other classmates know they're like oh you know because a lot of things i think are applied in theory inside the inside the business course yeah um, oh yeah but, but you're like yeah yeah no i did that yeah <laughs> yeah you're, I mean, you're like, you're like oh yeah that yeah that, that totally happens it's it's like funny because like some like some of my classes like like no like no one really knows at least i don't think because i just don't really talk but then like a like the like the couple of my classes that I do like talk frequently in like this one class I'm in it's called it's called public relations and music industry so it's all about like um like press kits and like you know that type of shit you know like buy artist bios and like how to like structure a rollout and kind of just like kind of boring topics like that you know um, so like whenever we'd start like a new little unit or whatever, like my teacher will have me like talk, you know, and just be like, so like, have you wrote, like, uh, like who wrote your first bio? Like what? And I'll just be like, I did, you know, like, fuck, like, and like, I don't know. It, it is on the bus. She's like, yeah, yeah it. it's, it's kind of a weird little dichotomy. You know, I would say that definitely for like the majority of my classes, it doesn't really get brought up just because I'm kind of like a fly on the wall a little bit. Um, 
but yeah it's definitely at times it's like an it's an interesting little like dichotomy you know well i mean just recently also just following your social media if anyone else is following his social media is like he sent out i think did you send out 200 packages or something ridiculous so i'm like i'm (laughs) like what is going on like at what point do you go like this i might have to put this degree on pause because I'm sending out 200 packages. I got a whole team behind me. And on top of this, I'm trying to finish this degree. Yeah. I mean, like, honestly, dude, like that thought really never comes up. Like I'm, I'm never, I'm never thinking of like bagging it just because of how deep I am like into it. Right. Like if I was, if I was like, if this was first semester freshman year, then that's a different conversation, you know, like first semester freshman year, dude, I had like, 300 listeners a month like literally no one not even like literally like no one listened to my music like only people that I knew in real life were listening to my music like friends that I had like hung out with frequently you know they were the only people that were like really like putting on my shit you know so kind of just like back then it was a different scenario but now it's kind of just like okay it's like I'm three years into this shit like you know, like if, if I bagged it, it would kind of just be like, okay, well, that was kind of a colossal waste of time, you know, like, why not just finish this shit out? Because it's like, yeah, at the end of the day, like, the whole topic of higher education is definitely a, a controversial one to me, you know, I feel like definitely, you know, like you, you said, you're a little older. So like, you're kind of out of the whole thing, which is good. But, um, you know, kind of just like with, just the whole kind of college makeup and kind of the cost of what it cost, like the, the price of what it costs to go to like a higher education institution. It's, it's, it's come to a point where it's just not worth it anymore. And it's, it's come to a point where this bubble has gotten so inflated that it's, that it's kind of, you know, running the other way of where it was originally intended to, to, to go. Um, But I don't know. I mean, still at the end of the day, regardless of, kind of like the the financial aspects of it and kind of just everything that that makes it kind of a little weird like in nowadays um you know still like a college degree can be looked at as something that is kind that like this little piece of paper like it'll like enhance your personal value you know like forever per se right it's kind of like okay like this is this is a cool little thing that i did right like this took four years of work this wasn't easy you know, it costed a lot of money. Like I went in, I did this thing and I got this like, okay, cool. You know, now I have now like at my deathbed, it'll be like, yeah, man, like I graduated with a degree in music business. Like, cool. You know, like kind of just another little like notch. You're doing it for the flex. Not not for the flex. Just it's, it's just another little notch in like your belt of life. Right. Like it's like, I look at it as, is like, it's in the same, like getting a college degree. It's in like the same category of like, learning a new language or like getting really good at an instrument you know it's like it's like it's an achievement that took a lot of like brain effort you know yeah you're you're definitely pushing yourself to become a better human being and i think that's all admirable admirable um and i think i have to really applaud you because i think i think i i interviewed this guy named stefan on my first interview and he had one song blow up and i think he was going to community college and he just just like well he just walked away he's like yeah this is good right yeah so and I mean, like, you know, of course, I'm not here to like dog on those people. Like, listen, man, like everyone, every single person, whether you're an independent artist or you're a filmmaker or, you know, you want to make a podcast or you make your, you make t-shirts or whatever it may be, like everyone's situation is different, you know? And it's like, if I had a song blow up overnight and I got like a fucking 50 million plays in like a day, would I stay in school? Probably not, you know, like... So it's kind of just like that situation is different for everybody. And like, if you make the choice of, you know, leaving your school or your job or whatever, you know, due to your passion becoming like financially sustainable or, you know, whatever, like do your thing, you know, as long as you're making an educated choice. Um, But yeah, it's just kind of, you know, everybody's own situations are bring their own challenges. Yeah, I agree. And um, I think, the, one of the things I, I, I'm curious about is how you deal personally with the amount of pressure and with the stress. Yeah. Um, how I deal, I, honestly, it's, it's weird because it's like the stuff that causes me the stress also alleviates the stress. 
you know? It's kind of like, okay, if music is really stressing me out, like it's also my outlet, right? And like, not, okay, that's kind of worded that wrong. Like music doesn't sh stress me out per se, but just kind of like all the responsibilities and the workload that kind of goes around this whole thing and like making this ship sail, you know, like in the, in the, in combination with, you know, like a, a college course load and like, you know, social relationships and like, I'm in like a romantic relationship, you know, it's like a lot of these kind of, they're not obligations, but they are like things that you need to be continuously nurturing, you know, and like making effort towards. Um, and, uh, yeah, just kind of with sort of like, I guess, personal outlets, I've really been leaning heavily on social outlets. Um, you know, where I am, like I'm surrounded by a really great group of friends. Um, I've got a great family, um, you know, so really kind of leaning on those resources because at the end of the day, like, you know, there's only so much stress you can alleviate by, writing a song or going for a jog or like smoking weed or like whatever it may be like you know like really to me like the truest form of like support and kind of like you know if i'm having a rough day and i'm a little overworked and i'm kind of like holy fuck i'm just really overwhelmed there's a lot going on like you know just like hitting up one of your good homies like hey man you want to come over let's listen to some music you know, we can go for a bike ride, we can, you know, smoke a J, we can have a nice talk, we can go to dinner, you know, whatever, like, kind of leaning on those types of resources, or that stuff is definitely very helpful. And, you know, just makes me feel better, for sure. Definitely. Um, yeah. now, going back to like what you said earlier, um, you said, you were releasing tapes, you're only getting like 300 plays a month, you know, it was just mostly people you knew IRL. Uh, how, how did how did things start to evolve? You know, how did people outside your circle of friends start to listening? It was, it was really kind of interesting. And like, it, it's, it's hard to describe a little bit. Um, so just let me, like, just like, let me know if this is not like, if I'm not being like clear or like, if I'm kind of being confusing, but like to try and des describe it the best way I can. Um, I think truly one of the, and it's kind of funny, you know, just kind of segueing from the whole, like, is college worth it? You know, is college a good option type thing? You know, like, it's interesting, because, like, coming to college was like a huge catalyst in like momentum for my music, you know, because like, I go to a music school, like, kind of, right? It's, it's, it's like, you can, yeah, like, you can come here to the school I go to, and you can get a law degree. But like the top three majors are all music related, right? And like the top major, like with the most kids in it is music business. So like truly like the culture at this school is, is very, you know, people have their minds on music, you know, whether they like, it's a lot of kids here that like, like kind of more country and like standard pop kind of stuff. Um, you know, but just in general, it's a very musically minded place. And kind of it was really interesting because like, coming here, you know, for freshman year in, in, 20, in uh, fall 2018, like I had had, you know, I'd had my one project out, I'd, my first EP, I'd had a couple singles. Um, and like, that was really interesting because like people like got to know my music like really quick, like kind of like the, my whole like class of like students, I would say. And like, that was kind of cool because it's sort of like, you know, I'm, I'm coming from my, my, you know, kind of home area, you know, in like the Chicago suburbs, where it's like, really, the only people that are bumping my shit is kind of like, Chicago musicians that I've come to know, and then like my friends at high school, and like the kids that I'm hanging out with in like the theater department, right. But then it's kind of like, when I'm coming to college, it was kind of this whole new pool of kids. And it's like, oh, shit, all these kids actually like the artists that I like, you know, so they are actually inclined to listen to my music for, pl for pleasure and enjoyment, rather than, you know, my friends from the theater department in high school, where it's like, yeah, they're still listening to, to my music. And it's amazing to have their support. But like, they're really not listening to this type of music. Otherwise, you know, like, they wouldn't be listening to this if they didn't know me personally, right? It's kind of that whole sort of thing. So then like coming to college, that was kind of a whole catalyst of kind of getting this whole kind of larger group of kids to be like okay like that's here on john he makes this kind of music he does this that and the other you know like that was kind of a whole thing and kind of building a little network around that you know and then kind of just like discovering my whole friend group and stuff it was it was like a, it was a really great process um 
But then kind of the first like moment of like serious recognition was like, I dropped this single in January, 2019. And then they fucking the, uh, the Spotify gatekeepers, bro, the powers that be, they put it on uh, new music Friday, like the big one. And I was like, that was the first time I'd ever gotten put on anything. And I like, here's my little song, you know, that I made in a couple hours next to like future. And I was like, bro, like somebody pressed the wrong button. Like I literally thought someone, I literally thought someone had made a mistake. Like I was literally like, dude, whoever did this, like somebody's getting fucking fired for this. Like, somebody fucked up like here i am like my music my my new song is next to like the new releases from like future and young thug like bro who fucked up here you know so like then that was kind of a whole thing um you know and kind of then just like that process forward and then that was kind of uh you know that was like january 2019 and then a couple months later i started making apocalypse wow um so it was just kind of like its whole you know sort of lineage yeah, I would say that that is for people who don't even know. Uh, that's like I would say your debut album, really, as yeah. far as the collection of like songs that feel like authentically you. Uh, I'd say yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. So that that's really cool. Did did you ever figure out how that happened? You just put music on Spotify and someone just was like happened to find it. And like that's cool. Let's put it on a playlist. Like for like Apocalypse Wow or kind of like everything. For the for the one that was featured next to Future and all that, the first song. That okay, kind of- okay. Yeah, no, no, dude, not at all. I was literally just uploading shit to Spotify. And wow. Like, like I've had no like. That's the thing. It's like you know, like to all my like listeners and you, I, I, I don't, I don't want to call them like fans. I'll say like like supporters. Yeah, right? people who support you. To, yeah. to all my supporters, like I always want to make it very clear, you know, because I've this is an interesting thing, kind of like a little side tidbit. Like I've noticed that a lot of my like um supporters a lot of them make music as well i've noticed like a lot of the kids that i'm kind of like attracting like they are also artists as well you know which is interesting um you know i don't really know why that is but um yeah no just kind of like to all my supporters and shit like i I always want to make it very apparent that it's like i have nothing you know behind the scenes like when it's like when I was kind of uploading those EPs and shit, it's like I didn't have any connects at Spotify. I didn't, you know, my fucking dad doesn't work for some record label. Like I don't, you know, I wasn't like raised in like a million dollar home and my parents are like, oh, hey, press outlet. My son made a song, you know, here you go. It's like none of that. Like literally I knew no one in the music industry. Like I had no resources, like literally nothing. And it was kind of just me like kind of throwing darts at the board you know, until like somebody on that side of the, the aisle kind of recognized it. Um, yeah, I, I always want to like make that a very apparent point, not as some sort of point of self pride and being like, oh, like I came from nothing, like fuck you guys. But like kind of more from the perspective of like, you know, listen, especially, especially since a lot of my listeners are making music as well, it sort of comes from a place of wanting me, wanting them to know that it's like, you know, it's like, yeah, you can, you can, you can get your music heard by, you know, any number of people you want. It's just, it's just a matter of how long it will take, you know? And like, it's like, if truly at the end of the day, if you are, if you're truly putting all the effort you can put into this and you're making strides to make your music better and you're not like, if you drop a song and it, you know, it, and it doesn't work, you know, if you're trying something new and you're trying to take, you know, new approaches and, build new shit and kind of you know make it make it kind of its own thing like really if you're doing that with like honesty conviction and good intentions like it's really only a matter of time you know until people notice you know so like definitely always want to make sure that um all my listeners know that for sure yeah dude definitely i think i'm seeing like a trend of of self-betterment that you have whether with school or just putting yourself out there and just letting trying to, you know trying to it's 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 yeah. it's the it's all it's all that we can do right you know and it's like yeah some days i'm i feel like shit some days i'm really happy you know it's just it's like the normal kind of human condition um now, yeah one, it's all just the, trying to strive for more one of the things that you were really hidden on um that i heard earlier was that uh you really encourage people to to play actual instruments. Yeah. Mm, how, how how come? How come? Um, I don't know. I I I've 
it's just like, it's an important thing, you know, that needs to be like respected, right? Like I've seen, um, I don't know if you've ever, I don't know if you've ever seen this advertisement, probably not. This is pretty like specific, but like, you know, how like YouTube, the whole, like, it's the whole algorithm thing. Like, like YouTube shows you like what you, what they think you want to see. Right. It's kind of that whole concept. So like, you know, kind of whenever I'm watching YouTube videos, I'm always getting ad advertisements for like music production, kind of that sort of thing. Right. Like, you know, understandably so. And I, I get, I, I always get this one advertisement and it's from some sort of company and they like developed some sort of plugin where like it creates like melodies and chord structures like for you. And like, that just pisses me off. Like that, like, that's like disgusting to me. It's like, bro, what's like, like, why wouldn't you rather just like learn how to play the guitar? You know, like, is that scalar? Uh, maybe, I don't, I don't know. I don't know the exact name of it, but it's like some weird thing. And it's sort of just like, what the fuck, you know? And of course it's not disrespecting anybody. I'm sure there's been some great music that has been made with that tool, right? It's of course I'm never, it's never like, it's never from a place of like, superiority it's never like oh you don't write your own chord structures like you're bad bro like you know of course like music is music there's no rules you can make music however you want if people like it you know good for you more power to you but like i don't know i definitely just always want to encourage people to kids that are interested in music i would much rather have it be like you know some kid listens to my shit and he gets inspired to want to make music like i'd much rather have that kid learn how to play the guitar or the piano or the drums, you know, first in real life and then start making beats rather than just like, oh, let me download Ableton and buy a MIDI keyboard and just see what fucking happens, right? It's just like, I feel like picking up a real honest to God, like a, a fucking physical object and like learning how to make music with it. There's something really special about that. And like, it definitely like you can, you can for sure like tell, you know, who's, who's employing kind of like knowledge of music theory or instruments or that kind of thing. It just adds so much more like dimension and emotion and feel, you know? So like, and, and kind of just with the whole college degree thing, it's a similar kind of thing. It's like, you know, you want to like learning an instrument, like this is a cool thing that you can carry with you forever. Right. It's like, if you're, if you're playing, if you're on your high school football team, it's like, yeah, that's great, but you're not going to be playing football when you're 65, right? It's like you can you're like you can play the guitar or the piano when you're 65. You know, it's kind of that sort of mentality, I guess. Yeah, it's something for life, and I think that a lot of times there's a lot of shortcuts. I mean, of course, the marketers that's all they want to sell you. They're trying to right. fulfill your need. They want you to to take that shortcut, but it's it's this it's this pattern again about self betterment and taking something that you can carry with you, having something yeah. that that becomes part of your personality and, and it actually becomes part of yourself rather yeah. than this totally. you know thing. And I think, totally. I think a lot of the times, uh, you know, if I may so graciously compliment you, I think sometimes in real people who play actual real music, like you said, we're tired of the creator and how he actually does real backing tracks. Um, yeah. I, think, I think that syncopation, that um, variation in, in strumming and keyboard and authentic feel, keyboard you know? it's right the now comes through, comes through. Yeah, yeah, it, it totally does. It, it you know, it, it, it cuts through all the noise. That's just why, you know, and not really... Um, like not really a lot of like kind of mainstream hip hop music is catching my eye right now because everything is very, everything is very programmed and everything is very like, you know, everything is very like quantized to the grid. It's all these kind of percussion. It all sounds the same, like, you know, and like, like if you're going to go on fucking rap caviar and you, you know, scroll through 10 songs, like it all kind of sounds the same, you know, it's all kind of these beats and like all this kind of shit, which of course is why, you know, that reasoning is why you dig deeper, you know, and you, and you dive into like, you know, underground musical communities that you've never been aware of, or, you know, little pockets of artists or albums or old shit or new shit or whatever. Like that's always, that's, that's the great thing about the internet is that you have the freedom to find all this stuff that you, once did not have the capability of finding you know but it's it's just all about just bringing that um kind of that variation in there you know right quick quick fire question time favorite yeah. song for black moth super rainbow oh chill fuck um 
favorite song by Black Moth Super Rainbow. I really love um, his first two, his like early, early albums, like the ones that he made in like the early 2000s. Um, like I really love Start of People and like all, all that shit where like it's like very early on. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely liking a lot of the shit from those albums. So I'd say definitely my favorite one that immediately comes to mind is a song called Hazy Field People. That song is good as fuck. Okay. Favorite, like favorite song from uh, Smashing Pumpkins? That I can't choose. Okay. We'll just, we'll just cut it as a... Favorite, I'll go favorite album by them. It was Melancholy okay. and the Infinite Sadness. Okay. There you go. And then Boards of Canada. Ooh. Um, Boards of Canada. Favorite song by Boards of Canada. Uh... Hmm. Let me let me let me let me pull up. Let me pull up. Music right. has the right to children. <laughs> Let's see. Music has the right to children. Um. Or honestly, I like the, I like Campfire Head Phase even more than that album. I was okay. All right, we're either going with like Chroma Key, Dreamcoat, Satellite Anthem, Icarus, or like Hey Saturday Sun. Love to hear it, dude. Yeah, great pick. With those those picks. So to kind of wrap it up, tell us, I want you to tell us about this next album, because from what I, from what I've just been hearing from your own personal, you know, megaphone of your Instagram, it's like, it seems like this one has been something that you really super resonate with and that you've really kept your head down a lot with and that you've been putting like almost everything into. So I really want to hear like yeah. him himself. What yeah. You, um, the, uh, the whole, like, I would say the title but like the whole thing with like the little, like the free item in the mail, was it like that's kind of announcing the title. So like when kids like get that little item in the mail, like that's when I'll kind of be like, oh, this is the title, you know, whatever, whatever. But kind of just like um, the actual sound of it. Um, like I, I go to school in Nashville, right? So I like, I'm, I'm from Chicago, but I'm, you know, kind of stationed in Nashville temporarily for the school purposes. And uh, one of my best friends here, um, their name is Luke, right? And Luke makes fucking amazing music. If anybody's listening, you know, like to the kind of looking for some kind of weirder, kind of just like more kind of genre bending shit. It's kind of in that hyper pop world. Um, definitely check out Luke Prost or the Frost Children. Shout out to them. But um, yeah, so Luke, they made a project uh, very recently and uh, they were telling me about kind of just the whole creative process of it and how Luke made it, you know, really quickly, right? It was made in like a month and a half, kind of two months. And I was like, oh, fuck, like, I, I want to try out that kind of model. Like, I want to try and just sit down for a very, like, a pretty short period of time in the grand scheme of things compared to like, however long I worked on Apocalypse Wow, and kind of try that sort of new model, you know, because like Apocalypse Wow was very like, of course, I like I love it so much. And it's like my favorite thing I've ever done in life, you know, not even music shit, just like anything like that's my biggest accomplishment was making that, you know, and like, um, uh, yeah, just kind of with that whole thing. It's it's very like, you can kind of hear it when you listen to it. When you kind of think back to the whole rollout, it was like, it's very meticulous. And it was very planned out, right? It was very like, you know, it was, it was this whole kind of big thing. It was very like, not orchestrated because that is like a kind of like a negative connotation, but like it was, it was very thought out, right? Like I, I put a lot of thought into Apocalypse Wow and kind of the whole way that it was going to be delivered and consumed, right? And with this new album, I'm definitely trying to kind of like, like I was saying, my friend Luke, like they inspired me to kind of take this more kind of lightning in a bottle, like kind of a snapshot approach you know whereas like apocalypse wow is kind of looking at my entire life up to that point you know like early childhood like early you know teen teenager year whatever like you know kind of getting to kind of 18 19 kind of getting older kind of starting to bleed into the life of adulthood you know like it was kind of that whole sort of that huge kind of gaping portrait of life right whereas like th this one it's I want it to be much more like lightning in a bottle like okay this is a snapshot of right now you know and kind of where the world is right now so kind of this whole thing it's it's kind of uh this project it's really kind of encapsulating like March until like kind of now of like 2020 you know kind of this whole 
area of just like, you know, the world has just been an absolute clusterfuck, you know, like no one's having a good time, you know, it's like, no matter what um, end of the, you know, the ideological or the political spectrum that you're on, no matter what you believe in, you know, in terms of any sort of issue, like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of pain going on, you know, there's, there's a lot of conflict, there's a lot of like, people at each other's throats, you know, it's like, you're, you're like, you're like, you're gonna be going home to Thanksgiving, and you're fucking aunt and your you know and your grandparent could be screaming at one another over politics whereas like five years ago i don't think that was really going on like maybe it was but like not as much in my world right so kind of and you know not saying this project is not a political project not in the slightest but it's kind of just ser it's serving as kind of um i'm trying to make it a piece of relief for like kind of how society is currently like I'm kind of looking at it as like, you know, like kind of the year 2020, it's kind of been this kind of long, kind of dark, depressing, like kind of winter, like everybody's kind of holding their breath, right? And this new one, I, the whole kind of concept behind it is like this whole thing kind of like the phrase like reaching for the sun, right? It's like you're in this shitty ass winter that's like so cold and terrible and depressing. And then it's like you step outside to that first day of spring, right? And it's kind of that that beautiful sunlight that just like drenches you and you're like, Oh my God, you know, like, this is what I've been waiting for. Like, this is that really nice kind of exhale, you know? So I'm really kind of uh, trying to make it a very kind of emotional experience, like in that sense, sort of. Um, but yeah, then just like with the sound and stuff, um, you know, it's much more focused on songwriting. It's much more focused on feel and emotion rather than like, kind of like, something maybe like of course it's still very lyrical like i like i like to try and stay as lyrical as i can but like it's definitely more focused on feel emotion and kind of like just raw energy rather than some you know like lyricism or like a really complex like concept or something you know definitely that was, so, that that was, so, that was so well said <laughs> hey thanks <laughs> i oh try my, my best uh do you have a favorite do you have a favorite track that that means maybe the most to you, you know, the name or just is, is there a, um, you know, I'm going to be honest, all the names are still kind of up in the air right now. So I feel like that, that I feel like this would kind of age poorly. Like I'd say some shit and then like in two months, somebody would see this and be like, wait, what that, that title is like not even on the album. Like what the fuck was he talking about? Um, but I'm, I'll say this, I'll say at least the first, like, um, the, the kind of the uh, the track listing is really starting to come together because that, that's a really important thing to me in terms of like, okay, like this one has to be track four and how is it going to go into track five and how is that going to go into track six? Like, it's a very like, that's a really, that's almost like a song in itself is learning how to structure the whole thing and kind of make it flow and make it like a, a really cool experience front to back, you know, that flows rather than rather than just like, a bunch of songs that are kind of just thrown together willy nilly. So I will say instead of giving like a direct song title, um, you know, I, I would say definitely uh, in terms of the track list, definitely the first like three or four songs is like a very important like block of music to me, for sure. Like definitely that like kind of introductory little section of the project, kind of like the first track, definitely the second track, definitely the third track, definitely like kind of really that little kind of that beginning of the project is like, for sure. It's like by far my favorite shit I've ever done. Definitely. And do you have a, do you have a release date for the album yet? No, no. We're thinking it. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to say anything. It definitely sooner than you expect. I'll say that sooner than you expect. Okay. Well, Hey, it's been honestly a major pleasure talking to you so much. And I, I really want to say to anyone out here, um, that might be listening is uh, definitely if you have a chance, make a donation or match my donation to the American yes. Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Me really, cool, really cool cause. And I really want to thank um, her on John here for helping me uh, sponsor that thing and also giving me some, some of his time and some insights to his music. That's been really, really cool. Thank you. Dude, yeah, man. Likewise, uh, once again, you know, to everybody listening, who, to anybody, li whoever doesn't know the backstory. Um, so the homie here, he, I did not see his Instagram comment. He was trying to get this little podcast together. Um, you know, and like, I'm always down to chop it up with people, always down to, uh, to talk music. Definitely, you know, love, 
conversating with anybody that I can, you know, and making new acquaintances whenever I can. But, you know, to the listeners out there, what, what is, what is your name? Um, it's Charles, but it's just the Zara. Yeah. Zara. Yeah. Okay. Charles, Charles, Charles do- graciously, generously donated a hundred dollars to the, to the charity of my choice, which was the American foundation for suicide prevention. Um, they do really cool work and yeah, just kind of echoing what he just said, you know, if you're, uh, that's, that's something, especially nowadays, you know, just kind of in the, in the little era we're living in, you know, like everybody's struggling with like a lot more, you know, than you may see on the surface, you know, it's like still, you know, it's like, yeah, the whole like COVID thing may kind of be winding down in terms of severity, in terms of like a death rate or whatever, but it's still a lot of people, you know, that are on pay cuts, you know, or lost their job or lost their health insurance, you know, and like something like suicide, it's, it's definitely a very, um, that's an issue that needs a lot of attention, you know, in, in today's climate. Um, so yeah, you know, anybody listening out there, definitely, if you've got an extra five bucks or a dollar or whatever, definitely uh, go on over to the AFSP. They are very good people. So yeah. Definitely. Yeah. If you like the podcast, if you join me, if you join his music, go ahead and please, and I'll put the link down below. So thank you so much for everybody and we out. 100%.